What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. So we're going to talk about Halloween Retribution in this video here today. Now this would have been one of the many drafts I believe that are out there for Halloween 9, the sequel to Halloween Resurrection. This would have saw John Tate return to get revenge for his mother Lori after Michael killed her in the last sequel, Resurrection. So this would be a follow up to that movie. Again, one of the many drafts I believe existed in the early 2000s. John would have teamed up with Sheriff Brackett, I believe, who was involved in this story to take out his uncle Michael Myers once and for all. Now, what I mostly want to go over is this opening sequence that would have brought back a very despised character from Resurrection. Probably would have made a lot of you excited to see this character go. Uh, the thumbnail is already spoiling it, so you, I don't really have to say it, but I'm going to get to his name soon. So the story would have been centered on a protagonist named Leia or Lee. Now, in the opening, we would have seen a returning Freddie Harris. And in this screenplay, it does note that Buster Rhymes, I guess, would have been preferred to return in the role. Freddie is at a local college in a town close to Haddonfield, I would assume. He's in a lecture hall being interviewed by a PBS crew about his new book that he has written that goes over him defeating Michael Myers, something we know he did not do <laughs> based off the ending of Resurrection. So he's profiting off that, I guess, and said goodbye to the Dangertainment. Freddie is signing copies of his book during the opening sequence after this lecture hall interview sequence, and he's he's eventually confronted by a strange man who ends up being revealed to be john tate uh freddie recognizes him and implies that he tried to contact john for his book so i guess he just wanted to reach out to michael's nephew but he couldn't get him because he's a hard man to reach and john is only here because he doubts freddie managed to kill his uncle he's like questioning him in the line when it's his turn are you sure he's dead did you see the body freddie then is shown leaving the college heading into a parking lot but notices his tire has been slashed obviously this makes him upset but a campus security suv approaches him and freddie tries to get him to help but the car keeps the windows rolled up and ignores him so freddie ends up telling the anonymous driver to to f off and he ends up kicking his truck as a result of them just not helping him now when he turns his back it's revealed michael is behind the wheel and killed campus security as their body is revealed in the passenger seat when the window is briefly rolled down. The truck is eventually backed up closer to Freddy who still has not noticed that this is Michael. So Freddy thinks he's about to get some help finally. But while his back is turned, Michael hits him to the ground with a nightstick. Freddy looks up to see the mask, but still questions who this person is. So he's clearly delusional as far as I'm concerned, because it's clear as day who this is, Mr. Harris. <laughs> it's somebody who's out for revenge after what you just did to them in like I don't know how many years has passed. I think this is set in 2004. So two years after what you did to them at the end of resurrection in their own house of all places. So you have some audacity there. <laughs> Freddie gets in Michael's face saying, I'm not afraid of you. So, you know, he's still doing that traditional stuff. We saw him doing in resurrection, this hard rock, you know, they want, I, I swear they wanted him to be this stereotypical black. And when I look at that movie now, I'm just like, Ugh, this it just makes me cringe. So a glimpse of a gun, is flashed for us to see that he has heat now i guess he's packing heat freddie has a gun he's in michael's face i'm like, oh, i'm not afraid of you you know he's doing all that signature stuff that kind of made him despised from the last movie freddie ends up pulling the gun out and aims it at michael freddie tells him to take the mask off because he seems to be doubting that it's michael he seems to have caught a dose of what after reading this opening he seems to have caught a dose of the lori the lori strode opening sequence syndrome because the whole entire resurrection opening while in some regard i understand it at the same time i don't i i don't see why someone would pretend to be your brother and come kill you but again she she must have been very delusional at her point in that life at that point in her life anyway so freddie again is telling michael to take his mask off he seems to again just still be doubting that it's michael michael manages to knock the gun away from freddie and slowly chokes him while he eventually pulls out his classic butcher knife and stabs him to death john eventually finds freddie's body in the parking lot and the suv pulls off when john tries to open the door because he believes it was michael and before he could find out the suv just pulls off now here's my thing the opening doesn't make sense to me in a lot of ways because i'm just making assumptions that would lead me to think this is irrational i haven't finished reading the retribution script i just wanted to talk about the opening the reason this opening doesn't make sense to me is because of how deluded freddie is when we clearly see at the end of resurrection michael get up kills well we don't see him get up but we see his eyes open what do you think happened after that 
did he have did he sit did he stay and have a tea party with with the people there no he killed them and he left so did this not make it to the news i just don't understand that how is freddie so deluded into thinking that michael is dead when we see that michael is not dead at the end of resurrection and even john john in this opening sequence while he appears and has a conversation with freddie he doesn't even make reference of the ending of resurrections it's as if the ending of resurrection didn't even make it to the news i'm pretty sure if michael walked out of there he did not just simply walk out he killed people along the way <laughs> unless they of course are still going with this narrative like they presented at the beginning of resurrection that michael somehow now cares that people know he's alive or not he's he's gonna need to be secretive so he didn't kill anybody he probably got a brand new pair of clothes and convinced the nurse to not tell anybody that he's alive and just somehow came to an agreement that way yeah I, the opening sequence here while it's cool in a lot of ways at the same time i don't i don't like it i don't like it uh the death of freddie harris don't really care Freddy was again already a despised character so seeing him go out in a more even even more ridiculous way it's like okay well you should have just committed to the death that you had in resurrection because that death people people would have I would have say would have liked the character a lot better if he had stayed dead when he died but then when he shows up and delivers that line trick or treat motherfucker that was just like okay this guy needs to die so this would have just I would believe led to a lot of very very much so round of applause from certain crowd members who do not like this character but you guys let me know what you think about this opening sequence down in the comment section below i'm thinking about actually recapping a lot of these scrapped scripts for halloween on my channel but let me know what you think about this opening down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notification and there's a video in the description i'll have links on my social media accounts i'm on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course let me know if there's any movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video